Hey guys, so I am so freaking excited because I thought I would not just talk to you about the business. In my earlier videos, I'd be like, this is the business. I would say four years and counting at age of 46. Well, obviously I'm 47 now, and I've been five years in a state of ketosis. And um, I'm learning how to methylate. And I'm learning a lot about gene mutations, as in homeozygous and heterozygous. And if you're having a mutation on your mama's side and your daddy's side, and so you develop health issues because you now have adopted this mutation within your MTFHR gene. But I digress. That whole science stuff really has something to do with what I'm going to talk about to you today, which is how to get lean and ripped in ketosis and how to get young or stay young. No, let's get young. Let's age backwards if that's even possible. Yes, it is through epi friggin genetics. All right, here we go. So how do we get into a state of ketosis, right? Simple, it, to me it is so simple. It's like sits right here and I get it. You guys tend to get it, not get it. So let's make it very clear. Okay, so here we go. People gravitate towards the ketogenic diet, otherwise known as the non-BS diet because to get into a state of ketosis is difficult. So you can't have any BS in your approach. But um, the ketogenic diet princi principles have been kind of, the, the term has been thrown around. It's not that simple, is to get your body to burn fat. Simple. So people say like, but don't I do that when I do cardio? I mean, I thought it was burning fat, like doing this every day on the cardio and the elliptical. No, you're not. You're burning muscle. Because in the wild, that is not na natural to go on an empty stomach with all of your stress and your heart rate and your cortisol jacked through the roof and then go do cardio. No. That's what, if you have a mutation, if you have an MTFR, MTHFR mutation, doing all that will exasperate your health issues. So, we have these methyl donor groups that are going to go on and turn things off and turn things off. What we want those methyl donor groups to do in the methylation process is to detoxify the body. But if your shite ain't working properly, you ain't going to detox nothing. You're actually going to build up levels of toxins within the body and the cells start to dysfunction. They start to not work as well. So when we just talk about these, oh, you guys want to get ripped on keto? Um, I could just do a bunch of videos that are just that and only talk about weight loss, but it's way more fascinating and way more interesting and way more of a journey than just simply dropping weight. So when you guys try to do the HCG diet or you try to do cyclic ketosis or you do anything where you drop your caloric intake really low, your body freaks out, and it wants to do what? Store on the fat! Because that is, that's its commodity. Why do women get fat? Why do they have more fat cells than men? Well, clearly to feed the baby in crisis of famine. I mean, that's what we want. We want a slow-burning, dense molecule that will keep us alive long enough to keep the baby alive. So fat is not our foe. Fat is actually our friend. But in the modern society of vanity, we don't want body fat on our bodies. People are like, Stephanie, I want the business too. Well, this business at the age of 47 with zero refeeds in a state of ketosis, was something that I have been working on for five years to get to the level of nearly perfection. And it has been a journey of not five days, five weeks, 
or even five months. It's been five years and every single moment was worth it. All of it, all of that time and effort. So what is the deal? How do we get into ketosis? Obviously very simple. Some people just want me to start off with these concepts right away, it's definitely get to it, but you guys don't understand talking about how to get into ketosis is really just a fart in a bucket. It is everything in between that you're not considering, which is all the like the blah, blah, blah forever, which is the meat of the soup. It's the marrow, not the bone. So here we go. You're going to drop your carbohydrates down to 15 to 20 grams. What does that look like? Well, you want to eat low glycemic cruciferous vegetables with enough fiber density, which would come from greens, collard, mustard, spinach, kale, broccoli. Then you go on to the cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, and green beans. Yes. So these can go by cup anywhere from 1.5 gram per cup, depending on the veggie and the fiber, to 3.5 carbohydrates. So you're allotted around five to seven carbs per three meals a day. That's gonna keep you in your 15 to 20 grams of carbs each day, three meals per day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's what you want to do in the first six weeks of your keto adaptation. Well, why six weeks? Because in that first six weeks, your body doesn't want to keto adapt. It doesn't know what the heck is going on with the old system. So we've got to train it. Your body is addicted to carbs, like a crack pipe. So when you drop your carbs down, your body immediately wants to crank it back up. And you will see people with a thing called the early morning Don's effect, effect, which is, what is that? That's when your blood glucose starts spiking. When you take your glucometer reading on your glucose, which I highly suggest, then you will see that your glucose, even though you're eating 15 carbs a day, is nearly 100 or over 4.5 millimolar or 4.6. That is a no bueno when you're trying to keto adapt because your body's going through a gluconeogenic effect while you sleep. Your body is raising the blood glucose back up, but you're not restoring your glycogen storages and your insulin isn't working. So insulin helps to take the blood sugar out of the blood because sugar is toxic to the body over five grams. So, hope that makes sense guys. Okay, let's get more into it. So, drop your carbs down to 15 to 20 grams a day. We know now from cruciferous veggies, low glycemic. If you gotta, and so you gotta watch out for your onions, your bell pepper, your, um, even watch out for the Brussels sprouts, you can have them, but they're more uh, carb dense, so just be careful, like don't eat like four cups of that business, because it could be going over the amount of carbohydrates that your body can handle per feeding. So you gotta know your carb tolerant level. But, so no onions, because they caramelize, they turn into sugar in the saucepan. Onions, bell peppers do the same, not as much as onions. Um, obviously corn, no. Carrots, no. Sweet potato, no. Um, yellow squash, no. Not if we're trying to drive our glycogen storages, which is the stored energy in your gas tank, out. So you gotta look at the time, because it's gonna be a little lengthy. You know I hate to do part twos. Okay, so we've gotta go towards now. So that's what we got. We got like 15 to 20 grams of carbs. That's simple, right? That's simple. Okay, so now we're gonna get towards the protein. 
Now, contrary to all the message boards, people keep thinking that you need a lot of protein to survive. Not true. And the irony is you've got the vegan world who are not eating their complete set of 22 amino acids coming from animal fat, and they tout that you don't need it because you can get your, veg your, your amino acids from vegetables which you can get a lot of amino acids from vegetables, you just don't get the it's an incomplete set. So if you're not eating the right combos and mixtures of all your amino acids coming from plant source, you're fucked. Excuse me, did I? I mean sucked. You're sucking. Um, so even those people, even though they choose that route, you have to sit there and constantly measure and get enough for, for body and repair, immune repair, and the protein within the cell to be able to Get the amino acids that it needs but here we go so why would this camp over here think you don't need plant source uh, uh, amino acids coming from protein dietary protein and etc and this one over here think that you need you know 250 grams of protein I mean it is so confusing sometimes but let's just go by the logics so we used to be hunter-gatherer societies and there we ate plants cyclically by the seasons. Now if they weren't growing, you're SOL if you're vegetarian. So you would have to hunt. Is what it is. Not my fault, not my problem, just is what it is. So they would hunt, but people don't understand they weren't chomping on a bicep. No. No, they were eating the eyeballs and they were eating the tongue and the brain and the vital organs because they're high in fat. Believe it or not, the brain is over 80% fat. Where are we? Okay, hurry. Okay, so they eat the fat. So they eat fatty protein. And their homocysteine and their glutathione and their methionine would be in the right balance. Not too much homocysteine, not too much methionine. Perfect balance. We need methionine and we need B12 for ourselves to stay healthy. It just is what it is. And red meat is a great source of B12 because it helps your methylation cycle, especially if you have a mutation within your genes. But here we go. So you would eat moderate protein because your body can only metabolize, if you're eating, especially on muscle meat, you can only metabolize a certain amount. There's obviously more protein in muscle meat than there is in other parts of the body. Um, so you, they would eat around uh, what you, not they, but you can eat, they would gorge if they had to. But we today, to get into a state of ketosis because we have so much cortisol, we would, um, we are starting to overstuff ourselves with protein trying to grow muscle. And then we're overstuffing our bodies with carbohydrates to drive the amino acids into the muscle cell. And that, my friends, can spark cancer. We don't want that and kidney stones when you have too low fat and too much meth uh, methionine coming from muscle meats, muscle meats, muscle meats. We need the fats. The fats have fi fat soluble vitamins in them. The big chunky mother earth vitamins. That's what we need to survive and for our, our immune system. So we want high fat. We want over 140 grams of fat depending on your size. Now I'm a small girl so I'm gonna have less fat. But if you're a big dude, you're going to jack your fats up to 200 grams a day. But you want your fats coming from pure fat, animal fat, uh, monounsaturated fats. That's what your body loves. And, of course, I've mentioned the um, medium-chain triglycerides, the small and particle-sized fats that you can get from coconut oil or pure MCT oil. But that's another subject. We want to stay away from dairy because dairy has casein and that's an allergen. And if you're trying to methylate, casein is no bueno. So just stop complaining and go towards the coconut milk and use the coconut cream as your fat. Don't I have to do part two? Stephanieperson.com, Stephanie the business person, my Facebook fan page, or Stephanie Ketogenic to learn more on your macros and how to get in a state of ketosis because this is not enough. Look for the second video. Bam.